My name is Lady Dunleith and I'm a food historian. Uh, in this centenary year for Northern Ireland, we have decided to take a look back at the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs in the early days known as the Ministry uh, to see how far we've come. Northern Ireland um, is unique, I think, in the Western world because the population here is still very close to the land. Some are just a generation away from the farm. So the 1920s are often referred to as the Roaring Twenties, but in the rural communities it could be anything but. Only in cities and major towns was there electricity and running water. Most people cooked on the open hearth in rural communities. A stove if you were wealthier, um, and on coal if you could afford it, otherwise peat. There were no tractors, but there were other pieces of steam-driven machinery which made life easier for wealthy farmers, especially for ploughing and harvesting. Many farm labourers had left for the cities and manufacturing jobs in the hope of better incomes. This included injured soldiers from the First World War who might have worked the land before. Some of the most basic foods were, by the 1920s, so heavily processed they no longer had any nutritional value. Hence malnutrition of the poor, both urban and rural, was a big problem. An example was butterine, you guessed it, an early name for margarine. This was made with vegetable oil, which has no vitamins, whereas butter is high in both vitamin A and D. Flour mills would grind the wheat with modern steel rollers. The friction of the rollers made them hot and this burnt out all vitamins and minerals. The goodness of the endosperm was wasted. Two of the most important foodstuffs, bread and butter, had been reduced to empty calories. Protein, carbohydrate and fat were in 1921 believed to be the building blocks of life. But it had been clear for decades that something invisible, even looking through a microscope, had to be present. Internationally, scientists called these accessory food factors as a stopgap. It took years until they were identified as vitamins, but it was in 1921. The three most important vitamins were named A, B and C. The discovery caused a major turnaround in public health. It had taken more than 40 years to prove a credible theory that could be applied to government food policy and put into legislation. The newly minted ministry oversaw an industry which farmed completely organically. Artificial fertilizers, antifungicides and pesticides were not yet invented. Refrigeration and freezing technologies were in their infancy, so all produce was seasonal. Organic and seasonal produce is what every smart restaurant aspires to put on their menus today. Things were changing for women too. Having just been given the vote, they also had the Ulster Dairy School, later to become what we know as Caffrey, Lochy Campus today. It was a school for women only. They could learn to make dairy produce and to look after poultry. Very much the jobs they had done traditionally, but the edge was to create more income. This was an early attempt to help farmers add value, more professionally and importantly, hygienically. We'll come back to this in future episodes. In the coming months, we will continue to look at the fascinating facts about our farming background and how the Agriculture Department helped farmers overcome obstacles that prevented them from producing enough food for a growing population. We look at the food that surround us, fish, meat, fruit and vegetables, potatoes, cereals and dairy produce. See you soon. <laughs>